Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window. Um, this show is normally a conversation, but today, instead of a conversation with me and somebody else on the voice chat, it's a conversation between me and you. We're doing a very special Q&A episode because this is going to be our last Viva Pinata episode for Interstage Window, and next week we're going to be moving on to Sims Two for the game that we're going to be playing while we talk. So welcome, Lunar. Welcome, Bree. Lunar, I see you. Uh, you regained your first this time. <laughs> uh, since it's Saturday, Kendra wasn't able to take that from you. So welcome, guys. Welcome. Uh, so happy to have you here. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Bree. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, um, y'all that uh, that kind of uh, know a little bit more. So Bree is one of these people. Because they're in my role play, life has just been absolutely crazy. So I think she's trying to be, she's trying to be very, hey, welcome, Nikki. Um, <laughs> yeah, life has been so crazy, in fact, that I want to let y'all know before we get started that I'm taking a step back from group role plays for the moment and going to focus on like one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I've got a D&D &D game that I'm playing and some things like that. And of course, the cafe is still fine. There's no issues there. It's just I'm not going to be running a group for just a little while. Um, until we until I get things kind of a little bit more stable with my household situation y'all know we have Jeff in the hospital we have the kittens it's just a lot right now so thank you so much Nikki yes this is this is the bunny hat although since this is the last view pinata episode this is actually the last bunny hat episode too we'll be switching over to the cat ears for all the time next week starting with sims 2 so so lots of kind of final things this episode um, if you have not yet submitted your question via the form, don't put it in that form. <laughs> I've already grabbed all of the questions out of that form, all of the role play related questions out of that form. And if you have questions still that you want to ask me, then please use the channel redeem down below. It is just one, um, it's just one point. So anyone should be able to redeem it to ask as many questions as you would like to during the stream. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's one of those things that even once it's worked out, there's still going to be more to do. So for the foreseeable future, things are going to be a little bit crazy. All right, guys. So I found out in regards to Viva Pinata that the Elephanillas in my game are definitely bugged and there's not really a way to to get and show y'all those. So what I'm actually going to do first before we hop into the Q&A is show you guys what the Elephanilla is actually like if we would have gotten it. So this is what it looks like all in color right here. It's purple and yellow. This is what it, its house looks like. It's a like an Indian inspired kind of building that it would go into. Um, I'm gonna show you, here's what the variants look like. There's a blue bell one, change it to blue. Buttercup changes it to orange. Poppy seed changes it to red. Like here's the blue one, he's blue and green. Here is the yellow one, he's orange and yellow. And here's the red one, he is red and yellow. So unfortunately we could not get these in the game um, because I had that bug, but, uh, but I've got a video of the romance dance so we can still watch that. So we are going to go ahead and, uh, and watch that video. do like a little ballet <laughs> so that's the elephantilla sorry i couldn't get it in the actual game unfortunately it's bugged and it just has to eat too much stuff it we can't do it in one go and the bug was basically that every time it left the garden it was resetting all of its items and um and i know people that have played this game are going to tell me it wasn't really it just looked like that no it for real really was like i tested this like for literally like 12 hours one day um in between the last viva pinata stream and this one it was straight up bugged it was straight up bugged very unfortunate Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the game though, because there is one other pinata that we need to we need to get. We still need to get the Dragonosh, so that's what I'm going to be working on in the game while we talk about y'all's role play questions. So I got some really good questions in the form, but we're taking questions also in uh, in the chat, so you can use the channel redeem for that. Um, y'all did y'all did a good job, you know, asking some serious stuff, some silly stuff. So it was really nice. Um, all right, so for the Dragonosh first, we have to go get a Cluckles. You have to do special stuff with this guy. He came out of the mine. So this is an egg that came out of the mine back there. 
All right. So the first question that I'm going to answer is from Jasmine, the leader Ortega. And this must be one of my friends because Jasmine, you sent in a lot of questions <laughs> and some really good silly ones. Um, and the first question that uh, the Jasmine asks is, um, what is one thing you're most nostalgic for? So I guess for me, when it comes to nostalgia in regards to role play, I, uh, I'm very nostalgic for like the live journal role play days. That was where I really, really got a lot of good role plays and I was young enough to have like tons of time to do it. And the format on live journal just really lended itself to, to really good role play. It was kind of, it was kind of like forum organized, but not exactly. And you could get, you could put different icons for each and every post that you, you did. Like you could customize it. You had a pack of them and you could pay for more, which was a whole thing. <laughs> um, but I'm super nostalgic for that area of role play. You know, that's when I first started using face claims, which I still do use today. Um, that's when, ah, oh, still not enough money. That's when I first started really kind of coming into my own as far as, um, you know, role play goes and kind of really developed my style. That's where I, when I went through my phase of like writing tons and tons and tons and then realizing also that writing a ton wasn't necessarily the best thing in the world. And, and sometimes those long, long posts were not suitable to me. So, oh, I know one thing I would need to do too. Um, there we go. Jed had asked for a pinata to be named Oranis the Destroyer a few streams ago. He wanted something cute though, so I'm going to give it to this red hot right here. I think they're pretty. All right, so Oranis the Destroyer. There we go, Jed. You can watch that later. Okay, I need to sell just a little bit more stuff. There we go. Now I have enough. The cluckles. All right, so we are going to go... Buy that cluckles and get it. Is there something in roleplay that you guys in chat are nostalgic for? I feel like my live journal days is really like is really the main thing. I'm very nostalgic for that. I had a lot of good times on Tumblr roleplay too, but ultimately the platform just was not conducive. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whereas live journal, I had a lot of good times. Plus, the platform actually was pretty conducive to roleplay. Here we go, Dragonosh. This is the last pinata. Now he doesn't, um, sweet. The 105 is the final level. We can get another level if we had gotten Elephanilla, but that didn't happen, so we're not going to. And he's gold because I hatched him on this cracked ground right here, but this is our Dragonosh. He also doesn't, um, level up on his own. He doesn't, like, cocoon and grow bigger on his own, so we'll have to do that for him, too. Uh, Bree says, I'm nostalgic for good old Facebook roleplay. It was my first official platform. I miss how simple it was and just fun and free. You know, I never roleplayed on Facebook um, because to me it was always like real life. And I know Facebook liked to ban people a lot that were not roleplaying like, you know, that were roleplaying and not being themselves on there. So, uh, so I never got into it. But I would see, I would see how you would be nostalgic for it because... The way that groups are set up in there, you can have like a forum type of thing so that um, that things flow really, really well, unlike on platforms like Tumblr. <laughs> Nikki says, I missed the open chats where you dove into it on AOL and started a scene without necessarily applying for or whatever. It wasn't much click play, you just wrote with whoever was available. Yeah, chat room role plays, like those hop in, hop out role plays, I think they still exist somewhat on Discord, but it's quite different. It's quite different now. Than it used to be um i think you have to find like specific servers that are hop in hop out and i don't really know what the mood is like there i don't really know i don't really know if it's similar to how things were on aol or yahoo chat rooms or things like that nostalgic for tumblr days when aesthetic didn't rule everything yes when i first started on tumblr you could have like all kinds of stupid size um gifs and and stuff and nobody cared and it was not a big deal and now i feel like if you don't do the aesthetic stuff, like no one cares and is, you know, <laughs> that was happening before the whole porn ban on Tumblr that really killed everything, you know? <clears throat> All right. So we need, we need to get a dragonfly too. We have to feed him a bunch of stuff to get him to cocoon up and grow. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. But I need a, a dragonfly. I... Oh, yeah. 
If you get rid of your Dragonosh, once you get one, if you get rid of your Dragonosh, you can get it again from Gretchen. All right, let's see how much Dragon Plus is. 28, okay. We're gonna grow some peppers. All right, so I'm gonna grow some peppers to sell while I read this next question. Okay, so the next question comes from the best co-host ever. I wonder who sent this in. Mystery. Can't tell. <laughs> Please use one word to describe your RP partners. Oh, one word to describe my RP partners. So I'm going to try to describe um, my RP partners as a whole. Uh, I would say if I was going to say one word to describe my RP partners in general, it would be talented. <laughs> <laughs> um, something about role play and I guess the type of partners that I like, I tend to take on partners that I find inspiring, you know, it's people that are either have really good like characterizations that I enjoy or they have like really lovely prose that I like um, or they inspire me in like how they plot and how they socialize. So I would say talented. I, uh, maybe it's just because I'm busy <laughs> and I guess I'm kind of a snob about this, um, but I definitely don't really role play with people that don't inspire me, you know, um, I just, I just don't, <laughs> uh, you know, although I can find something about most of, most people that I role play with that I, that I enjoy, but, um, but I don't tend to role play with people that I don't find at least a little bit inspiring. So I would say talented. Talented is probably the answer to that, the one word to describe my RP partners. Um, so I'm just growing these chilies because I need some more money to get the dragonfly. And I don't want to sell anybody that I have, although I could. I could just sell those juicy gooses. That would get me the money too. I might do that later if I end up needing more money to get as far as I want to get on this. And once we get this dragonosh as big as he's supposed to, to cocoon up and be big, then we'll have done everything in this game. I don't think it sounds snobby. Writing can only happen when there's inspiration, especially in roleplay. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. I think if you're, I do think that if you're not inspired by your partners, it's a little bit, you know, it's almost impossible to actually do the roleplay. I just think definitely when I was younger and less experienced, it didn't take much <laughs> to get me interested or inspired compared to what it takes now, <laughs> which is a whole other thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it takes a little bit more now, I would say, for sure, than it used to. All right. Here we go. Gretchen, fetch him that. And see, he's a dragon, so he flies. All right, let's do the next question. Well, we kind of let some time pass here. This comes from Bad Seed Good Read. What is your advice for playing a character that is mean or aggressive or backstabbing for someone who hasn't written that yet? Oh, so this is a tough one. I feel like the first time that you write an actually mean character, a lot of people get really hung up in like, you know, are people going to interpret this as me versus my character? And, um, and it can be a bit stressful because you think like, oh, people don't like my character. Maybe they don't like me. Or some people like literally wonder, you know, is this character being a jerk because the person doesn't like me? And because people in role plays do that sometimes, you know, character bleed is a thing that happens. Um, it's almost unavoidable in, in some sense. But of course, you know, some character bleed is, is worse than others. Some character bleed happens more than others. So um, I think the first time that you play an actually like mean character it can be a little bit daunting because you're not kind of used to that and it's a little bit hard to to know what's going on if it's really like you know if it's really what it seems like so i would say one piece of advice that i have and this is really a piece of in general life advice um but i think it applies to this situation in role play as well if someone hasn't told you that they're upset with you then i think it's best to assume that they're not upset with you. <laughs> and what I mean by that is like, if someone's like hinting that they're mad at you or like, or like their attitude is, oh, well, it's obvious, so I'm not gonna tell them like, no, that's not right. If you are upset with someone and you want them to know and you want them to act accordingly, you have to tell them. So I think when it comes, when it comes to role play and you're playing that mean character, 
if no one has told you like, hey, you person, individual, have upset me or pissed me off by this thing in the role play, then I think it's safe to assume that people are okay with the mean character. Uh, so that would be my first piece of advice is try not, try to exercise the character bleed within yourself. There's nothing you can do about other people having character bleed, unfortunately. It happens sometimes and that's just kind of how it is. So that would be my first piece of advice is just to assume that, uh, that, that people are, are doing right by you, that they're not having those things and, and having that character bleed, or at least if they are, they're trying to suppress it and not take it out on you, right? <laughs> uh, so that's kind of the first thing that I would say is, is important. Um, the second thing is to be patient with yourself. The first time you do anything is going to be a little bit of a struggle, and I don't think it's a big deal if like the first character that you write like this feels uncomfortable and you think you didn't do a very good job or whatever, um, the first time you do anything, you're probably not going to do a very good job at it. You know, you don't you don't go into a new thing assuming that you're going to get it right the first time um, or hope not because that is unrealistic upon yourself. And um, and I don't think you should. I don't I just don't think it's a good way to, to behave. Uh, also, I think it's good for these if you've not written this type of character before because most people think of themselves as the good guy in their own narrative right so i think it's good to like think about when you've encountered someone like this in real life and they were mean or aggressive or backstabbing like what was what did they do how did they act what were their motivations in behaving this way and um until you get used to it try to model a character after that and I think that's that's a little bit easier than trying to model it after your own times that you behaved this way, because we all want to believe ourselves the good guy, you know, even even if we're not all the time. So I think in this particular instance, modeling it after your own behaviors can be kind of difficult. Because <laughs> then when someone reacts where it's like, oh, I thought your character was super mean to mine, I'm upset. It, it can feel personal because you're like you're like I have done this before in real life and uh, and I, I think I was right and justified and da, da 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 and things like that. So modeling it after somebody that you know instead of yourself I think can be helpful in that situation too. Nikki says I like to find a character in a show that fits what I'm trying to play and then watching their scenes, taking notes, practice describing how they act and move and speak. Um, in terms of a more direct how-to. Filling out character surveys can help flesh them out into my character instead of the TV shows. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like that kind of um, approach as well. Uh, modeling it off of an existing character and uh, and then kind of adding to that your own spin to it so that it doesn't feel like you're just playing that character. It feels like you're playing your own version of them or a different character. I think that's a good way too. I guess what, what I'm really trying to say with that piece of advice, um, and I think, Nikki, you added a great thing to it, is like just... For the first time, don't model it after the, your own bad behaviors, because then it's going to be really hard to not take it personal when people dislike your hateable character. <laughs> and and know that, that people enjoy characters that they get to hate on. You know, villains are very popular for a reason. I mean, everyone, everyone loved um, Kylo Ren, right? He was incredibly popular. Um, bad dude, did a lot of bad things, incredibly popular. You know, so there's reasons for that. So I think the first time that you're playing this type of character, it can it can be a little bit jarring, you know, weighing the praise that you might get from people, because there will be probably some of that too if you do a decent job at it, and um, weighing that with the whole, like, people that really love to hate on villains, because that'll be hard too, and people will probably comment on that. So you gotta have a little bit of a thick skin if you want to play an actually mean character. <laughs> that is part of it. Um... I think that's the main things. I think that's the main in regards to like mean backstabbing, like that type of character. And if that kind of thing interests you, we have a whole uh, episode on um, on villains in particular, where we go into a lot of tips in in that sort of thing. Hey, Jane, welcome, welcome to the stream today. How's it going? We're in our we're in our Q and A and last Viva Pinata episode. We've answered a couple questions so far. If you guys have questions for me, stuff that you want to talk about, 
uh, please use the channel redeem down below. It's only cost one point, so anybody should be able to easily do it. No problems there. Um, very, very cheap. All right. So he, he didn't, I noticed he didn't eat the red hot and salamango that I tried to take him to. He needs to eat some of those. So I'm going to breed some more. Maybe it's because of the variant that he didn't eat them. I'm not 100% sure. He also has to drink a bottle of milk. I don't know. Maybe he has to do the milk first. I want to see. Oh no, milk is in the produce. There's only one other time that I played this game that I actually got a Dragonosh, so I don't know him as well as maybe some of the other pinatas. See if he has to have the milk first. I'm doing my taxes. <laughs> well, Jane, I'm glad I can keep you company while you're doing your taxes. That sounds um, very not fun. I hope you get a nice refund, though. That's the bonus of doing taxes, is a lot of times you get a nice refund check at the end. All right, are you going to eat the drag, the dr snapdragon? Maybe he has to do these in a certain order. I don't know. He ate the milk. Looks like he's going to eat that. Yeah, he'll eat that. Okay. Well, hopefully not having a variant one. Oh, that's a good question, Jane. We can talk about that next. Why no pets when Freya was made? Um, it just didn't seem realistic or right that you would be able to have pets on a cruise ship. So the, that's why no pets was, was brought in. Also because there's like aliens and things and it's a space role play. Um, another part of that conversation I remember having is like that people were probably going to want to make up their own species of animals and things like that. And I think we didn't want to get into approving or denying various things. Um, also because there were powers and points involved, we had a little bit of trepidation on things about like, are people going to try to play Freya to win? And how is that going to affect things? So, you know, um, we didn't want, we didn't want people to, to do that as well. Not that I think most of our players really would. I mean, we probably could have allowed it. It was just, you know, the decision at the time is the role play doesn't need it. And we can see some potential issues with it that we really don't feel like getting into as a mod team. So, But, you know, as you all know, um, I'm stepping back from group role plays for a while. I actually passed Freya over to, to Belle. So Belle, who's been in the role play for a long time, is owning Freya right now. And um, I'm sure it's in good hands. And uh, she and whoever else she puts as mods is more than welcome to make any changes to that role play. So if they want to like redo it, start over, if they want to change some rules and allow pets or whatever, like all of that is totally fine. I don't care. I mean, y'all know, I am 100% okay with, uh, with people taking things and that sort of stuff. So I'm stepping back from Freya. It's not my baby. I am cool with whatever is decided that happens to it. But yeah, that could change now if Belle wants to. All right, <clears throat> we gotta wait for that red hot to hatch and grow up. And same thing for the salamango I'm breeding. Then we'll try again to feed it to the dragonosh. We gotta wait for a um, we gotta wait for a dragonfly from Gretchen Fetchem as well. Those three things, and then it should cocoon up, and we'll have a big dragonosh. And that'll be that'll be the last thing to do in the game. <clears throat> so yeah, um, Jane, I had mentioned that at the beginning of the stream. What happened to Freya and and all of that stuff. And at some point we will probably go back to running group role plays again. It's just that for the next several months, I know I'm not going to have the capacity to do so. I'm not going to pretend, you know, <laughs> when I have the capacity to do so again, I'll just make a new one. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, and I have no concerns about that. All right. Give me that egg. Oh, I should have kept the cluckles to hatch these faster. You know, I can go buy another one, I think. I have enough money. Let's see. Alright. Why don't you go hatch this one? Oh, it's about to hatch anyway. But you can go hatch the Salamango one for me. There we go. <clears throat> All right, 
Um, the next question that I'm going to read, so this is more of a, a this was a Dear Abby type of question that was submitted, um, which was great. I love this. So, okay, from Losing Patience. I have a role play partner that I've really enjoyed writing with for some time now, but he has a habit of leaving the role play sphere for long stretches of time due to life and mental health. He's gotten me into things and then vanished several times, leaving me hanging with the plot that we made that is now years in the making. How do I tell him if and when he comes back that I don't want to write with him anymore because I'm tired of getting left behind without blaming him for having these struggles? Wow. Oh, gosh. Um, this is really tough. This is really tough, right? I think there's a lot of role players who want to role play and enjoy the hobby, but don't really realistically have the time to commit to role playing. And I think that this is one of the ways that that manifests is people coming and role playing for a little while, leaving for long stretches, coming and role playing for a little while, leaving for long stretches. I don't think it's necessarily bad to do this. You know, it's a pretty free form hobby. It's not a big deal. But I also do believe that if you're regularly doing this to people, you can't be surprised when people are like, I don't really want to role play with you anymore. This isn't working. You know, I want you to stick around for longer. And if you're not going to, then I'm not really interested, you know? Um, I, I, I do think that that is a problem that a lot of role players do. So I assume based on the question, losing patience, that you do want to tell him if he comes back, that there's not an option of just like not addressing it and just not starting another role play with him. Um, and I'm, I don't have context here, but I'm assuming there's reasons for that. Like you care about this person's feelings. You, you won't want to be honest with them. Or maybe you know they're going to ask for another role play. So you're going to end up having to address it. You know, you don't want to ghost them. That sort of thing. Um, so it's tough. This is really tough. Uh, Nikki says, it's deeply inconsiderate, though, to leave someone on red like that for length of time. And that stop and go can murder and use. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's not ideal, right? I understand why people do this, but it's it's not good. It's not good. Um, I don't know why this person behaves this way, and I wonder, losing patience, if this is a behavior that you have addressed with them before and told them it bothered you. Um, if you've not, then I would say that's going to be the place to start, is to make sure that they understand that it bothers you and why. And, um, I think when you're when you're doing these types of things, it can be helpful in the beginning of the conversation to use a lot of I statements like I feel this way when this happens or I don't like this behavior instead of saying, you know, you do this and it hurts my feelings like starting the sentences with I, I think can soften it a little bit to make it not seem so attacking. But at the end of the day, you are telling this person that this thing that you do is not acceptable and I'm not going to accept it anymore. So it's tough, right? It's tough. Uh, how, how do you do that in a way that's going to, you know, fix the situation? I, I'm not sure you can. Like, that's the thing is when you have to, when you decide you have to be honest with someone about a behavior that they're doing that upsets you, you have to also be open to the possibility that they have a poor reaction um, and it hurts the friendship. You cannot control the way that the other person reacts to you telling them this news. The only thing that you control is yourself. Uh, now I do believe you should tell them because if you value their friendship, you value their opinion, then that's something you want to do. You want to be honest with your friends and let them know, uh, it's clearly bothering you. You're not going to continue this pattern of role playing with them again. So at some point you have to tell them you're not going to role play with them anymore. Uh, so I think you, you have to be honest. I mean, be kind and gentle as, as you can, but, uh, but you have to be honest and try not to blame them or shame them because they probably have reasons for doing what they're doing. You know, they're a person too with, with feelings and thoughts and desires. And I'm sure they're not doing these things like on purpose, you know, or, or maybe they don't understand why it's upsetting. I don't know. I find that hard to believe. They probably understand exactly why it's upsetting. But, uh, but yeah, I think, I think you just kind of have to rip off the bandaid a little bit. Like there's no reason to be mean about it. You can be kind about it and treat them like a human, but I think you do have to tell them and you have to be ready for the fact that their reaction might be bad. Like they might, they might really not like it. <laughs> um, so it's something you're going to have to, you're going to have to address. And, uh, and I'm I have more power to you for doing it. I do think that it's, it's the right thing to do and it's better to address it with them if they do come back. 
Now, I guess there's a possibility that they don't come back this time and then you never have to deal with it. <laughs> um, for me, that seems like that would be the ideal. But if at some point they do come back, then you will have to talk to them about it. And, um, and that sucks, you know. Uh, that's the sucky conversation to have to have. But, uh, but the thing is, is afterwards you'll have a sense of closure and you will eventually feel better about it, even if you don't feel better about it initially. So good luck. I think you're on the right track with considering talking to them or maybe you're recognizing that you need to talk to them. I'm not really 100% sure from the question, but it sounds like you're on the right track. It doesn't sound like you're considering just not addressing it and continuing to start role plays with them that you know they're going to ghost you on. So. Yeah. Have any of y'all in chat ever been in that situation? I, I know I definitely was in that situation a lot on Tumblr, where people would constantly like leave and come back and leave and come back and leave and come back. And um, and there were some people that that uh, that I just stopped role playing with because they would keep doing that over and over and over. This is not working. What is happening here? I'll break it open. All right. Just be in the can. Believe that. Um, and I know that I had several different reactions and it really depended on how I felt about the person. There was definitely people that like I didn't really care for. We never really built a strong connection and um, and they just wouldn't stop asking for more role play. And I definitely have had like I just blocked them, you know, <laughs> is that the right thing to do? Probably not. But like on Tumblr, like things were different things were different on tumblr and so that was my reaction to some of them some people i told and i definitely got my ass handed to me um a couple of times when i told people you know uh people had some woo serious reactions to being told that uh that their actions had consequences you know i definitely got some i can't believe you're prioritizing role play over real life da 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 da, -da and it's like you know I'm not prioritizing role play over real life. I'm prioritizing my comfort <laughs> over other things, you know? Dane says, I think I am this situation, though. I just get busy, not mentally affected, so I ha at least have an excuse. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean, Jane. Um, but, you know, I don't think that you would react poorly if somebody was like, you know, hey, I, I think I'm good. I don't really want to role play with you anymore because you don't ever stick around long enough. You know what I mean? I don't think you would freak out over that. Um... So, you know, I don't know. I assume you're reasonable. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, if you're reasonable and somebody's like, well, I don't really want to role play with you because you get busy all the time and stop, then, you know, then I don't think there's any problems, right? Do you make attempts to be proactive and address it? And yeah, I'd be cool if someone told me what's what. Yeah, I mean, that's what I would think. So then I don't think it's a problem. Um, Nikki says, I had a partner like that who struggled with depression, but wrote beautifully. I pulled the plug on it after three months, though. That's maybe a me thing, being inconsiderate of my time when we make plans and then bail last minute is a huge issue with me. Yeah, Nikki, I feel that. Um, I haven't had a situation like that in a long time, I guess because I've gotten older and I have more older friends. <laughs> but definitely in my younger days of like role playing on Live Journal. I definitely had some people that were just like, you know, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but just like sad all the time, um, upset all the time, tragedy in their lives all the time. And, um, and uh, yeah, I, I didn't really take too kindly to that as far as role playing goes. <laughs> this was four or six years ago. It's not so noticed, I guess, in groups. Yeah, it's definitely not as well noticed in groups because people can come and go much more easily. The group can live on without you, you know. I've definitely been in this situation and am in this situation on Tumblr, but I never claim to be a fast response person there. So I understand that's not always people's forte and they're free to go on without me with no hardships on my end. Yeah, Brie, I think that's fair. I mean, on, on on Tumblr in particular, if you put on your blog like that you're just, you're not fast and then people decide to role play with you anyway and then live up to the expectation that you said that you're not fast and you, and you bail sometimes, like, then people can't really be surprised. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... You set the expectation up front, and that's the best that you can do. The only thing that you can do if you're that person in the situation is try to set the expectation up front that this is how you are, and this is what role play is to you. And then if somebody, you know, doesn't take well to that, then just be like, okay, bye, it's no problem. It's fine. And, you know, I think that's all you can really do. Literally label myself as a slow response blog, yeah. Yeah. 
Yep. Um, I think there was a lot of people on Tumblr that, that role-played that way. Um, so, you know. Didn't stop certain people from getting really upset, though, <laughs> over over certain things. Uh, thank you for the hydrate, Nikki. I just did, but I'll do it again. I'll, I'll hydrate with water this time. Backward. Don't know how to drink, apparently. Ooh. Okay. I like this next question. Okay, so we still have to wait for the dragonfly. I guess I had to bust those things open. So we'll have to bust dragonfly open, too, when he gets here. All right, so I want everybody to answer this question. Everybody in chat answer this question with me. If you could only play one canon character from an existing fandom for the rest of your life, who would it be and why? Okay, I'm going to name a character from a basically dead fandom. Sorry, this is just true. Okay, this is just, this is just true. <laughs> it's Haley Marshall from the originals. Yes, the Vampire Diaries and the originals both are not on the air anymore. They've moved on to this legacy show. That, like, as far as I can tell, nobody watches. It has somewhat of a fandom, but it's tiny, tiny, tiny. Nothing like Vampire Diaries fandom used to be when Vampire Diaries was actually on air. Or even Originals fandom was back during when it was on air. But, um, yeah, Haley Marshall. I just, I vibe with her so much. I vibe with her so much. I, I love her. I have, like, this innate understanding of the character. I can write her so easily. I find her incredible incredibly versatile to the types of plots that I want to to do um so yeah Haley Marshall from the originals I would play her a hundred times over and um and it would take me forever to actually get tired of her I think she's just she's just like so badass you know and cool and you know I don't have to I, I never have to like rely on my partner she's a very easy character to like push the plot forward with so um so it would be easy you know Easy not only on the muse, but easy to keep the roleplay going. Oh no, he ate my cluckles. That's okay, we'll just sell him for money. Come on, resident up. I know you want to. No, you want to. You don't hear that? There's a really loud jet overhead right now. Like flying very low. I don't know if the I don't think the um the thing picks it up. Ooh, okay, here's Bree's answer. Shirley Crane from The Haunting of Hill House. I almost want to say Lily Evans, but I struggled to write Harry Potter characters in verses that they aren't simply navigated into, whereas Shirley Crane, I love her so much. I can slip into her headspace very easily and feel comfortable with it. I love that. Um, so uh, that show, I wasn't super into it, but it's a it's a pretty decent fandom, right? And isn't Blythe House the one that, that came out recently? It's kind of like sort of a sequel to it. It's got a lot of the same people in it. Like not a direct sequel, but like a sort of sequel by the same people, right? Like, it's supposed to be the next part. That's my understanding anyway. I think Lily Evans is a great choice. I think she's a great choice for the same reason, like, Haley Marshall is. You know, she's a she's a character that, um, that's very easy to move the plot along herself. You know, like, she can push things forward. Um, very easy to understand her motivations. Um, and, and popular and, and fun, and people people like Lily. I think she's a good choice, too. Oh, Nikki! <gasps> Teen Wolf. Oh, you're after my heart. Allison Argent from Teen Wolf. I like playing humans in modern, modern fantasy types. She has this badass history, and she's a human, but just as badass because she made herself one. She's involved with the monster types, but not one herself. Oh! <laughs> oh, awesome, Nikki. Um, oh my gosh, I loved Teen Wolf. The first several seasons, it got kind of weird in the last couple seasons, but the first, like, three or four seasons of that show so freaking good i freaking loved it and allison argent is a great choice great character um i think we're, i feel like we're all choosing like very similar like it's like it's like the badass um very easily motivated woman character what does that say about us about the kind of people that that come hang out with me on these streams <laughs> uh blind manor yes the haunting fandom is kind of like ahs where each season includes the same actors for the most part but completely different story normal and haunting oh okay that's what i thought i didn't watch that that next one but um so that's what i had guessed okay jane's answer forma giant spain as a woman or man <laughs> so jane what you're saying is the arthur type that you keep re-rolling you would just say like torment can do that and you can just play him over and over i like that so i mean you basically got similar answer i feel like just 
you know, you're willing to do man version instead of necessarily woman version. <laughs> but yeah, I think Tormund would be a, a great canon character for you. Um, I love that. <laughs> good choices, good choices. You know, I never checked. Never checked if uh, if the Dragonosh has a house. I don't, I don't know if he does. Yeah, he doesn't. Because he doesn't breed. Like you only, you can only get the one egg in each garden. So you can never have more than one of this Dragonosh in, unless you just put multiple of them in different gardens. Yeah, Arthur all the way. I love that for you, Jane. I think that's perfect. I love Arthur. I love that type. <laughs> He's such a good character. And you write him so well. <clears throat> okay. Where is Gretchen? Where is Gretchen fetching with my dragonfly? Octavia actually has Shirley qualities, so there's that. Oh, Octavia is great. I love Octavia. She's wonderful. I can see that. I can see that for you, Bree, as playing that type over and over. So the mine that I have here that you get the Dragonosh egg from, it will spit out various things that you can sell. Y'all just saw me sell some seeds earlier, and then um, I sold a sapphire just now. But it'll also get these dirt patches, which do nothing, and so I just smash them when that happens. <clears throat> All right, as soon as the dragonfly gets here, that'll be it. And we'll have done everything we can possibly do in view of Pinata, except for the dang elephantilla. I'm kind of upset about that, because I really wanted to show, like, everything in the game. And I guess I kind of did, because I showed it from the wiki page, but, like, I wanted to do it. I had no idea that elephantilla would be bugged. And I'm still not super clear on if it's just, like, something to do with my game in particular and the way I installed it, because Games for Windows Live isn't a thing anymore, so you have to, like, kind of jury-rig this a little bit. Um, because I asked, I asked on the Viva Pinata forums, and no one else had said they experienced this bug. And I know this bug doesn't happen in the Xbox version. Um, it seems to be potentially just with the PC version, but I don't know if it's in general the PC version or if it was like just happened to me. Nikki says, I have a long standing love affair with ladies who start off as soft and weak and then empower themselves. Yes, exactly, Nikki. Bingo. You got it. <laughs> that is a type. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Because that's kind of how Haley starts out. Like, in her, her backstory, basically, she's an orphan. She doesn't know where her family is. And all of a sudden, when she becomes a teenager, she starts um, transforming, right, into... I think it's when she becomes a teenager. I can't remember exactly how it works, how, how it happens to her. But you start to become a werewolf in Vampire Diaries. Um, later on, like, it's not something that happens immediately. I think the lore was, like, you had to kill somebody. I think that's how it worked. I'm trying to remember for sure. It's been a really long time since I've been in the fandom or role-played her, like, canon compliant. So, like, that happens to her when she's pretty young. Um, and then, and then essentially she starts turning into a werewolf. And that's not going to work with her adopted family or foster family or whatever it was. And so she kind of, like, runs away from home and starts this search for like her birth parents and it's like a whole thing it's great <clears throat> she's great the first thing that she does in canon basically is she comes in and starts trying to free this group of what's called hybrids which are bound like they're sire bound to klaus which is one of the villain type characters in the show and she's like i'm gonna help you guys free yourselves from this whole ordeal so like she just she just comes out swinging. It's wonderful. I love her so much. All right, next question. Let me look a little bit more. You have seen all the opinions. There we go. All right, next question. This is another. This is um one from. <laughs> Somebody just put this in here because they wanted me to say it. Federico Montoya Gonzalez Smith the Third Junior. How are you the third and junior? I don't understand. But okay, Frederico, if you could only play... Oh, no, that, that was the canon character one. My bad. This next one is another Jasmine, the leader Ortega one. So thank you, Jasmine. Ooh, snacks and finger snaps. Oh, I love that, Brie. After we do this question, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i set up your command for you. All right. Um, so Jasmine says, if you could be in any video game for 24 hours, which would it be and why? Which would it be and why? Uh, any video game. Stardew Valley. 
Stardew Valley, I think. It's so chill, and it's so, um, it's so, I have mine set up anyway, it's super aesthetic. So it would have to be my modded version where it's got the pink and pastels and everything. Um, but yeah, Stardew Valley. At some point, we're going to play that on the channel. I have thoughts um, of a different kind of community day where we kind of can get together and play on that farm. Because um, we do the Among Us community days. But I would love to have also a chill community day. And I'm just kind of kicking around how I want to do that. So spoilers for you guys that are here today and uh, and people that actually watch the VODs all the way through. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of kicking that idea around. I haven't even told Landon yet, but I'm going to tell her. I'm going to tell her next. Um, but I would love to do something like that because I love that game. It's it's adorable. It's aesthetic. It's beautiful. Ooh, Nikki says Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh, I like that. I love the first two Kingdom Hearts. After Kingdom Hearts... So there was Kingdom Hearts and then Kingdom Hearts 2 that I like. All the other Kingdom Hearts, honestly, convoluted and weird, and I'm not into it. <laughs> that is my uh, cold, cold Kingdom Hearts take, okay? Kingdom Hearts 1, Kingdom Hearts 2, good games. The rest, what? What? I don't... I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. Jane says Animal Crossing. Oh, good choice, Jane. Good choice on the Animal Crossing. Perfect. Same vibes as my Stardew thing. Yes. Um, or Red Dead Redemption, as long as Arthur wasn't down. <laughs> right, because then you wouldn't be in danger. I Red Dead Redemption, I don't know, kind of a dangerous choice. Uh, but I love your Animal Crossing choice. Mine would be The Last of Us. I'd die, hands down. <laughs> a clicker would kill me. But I'd want to at least try to be kick-ass with Joel and Tess. Oh, that's fun, Brie. But you like those more, like, you know, shooting, killing people games and stuff like that. I think you have you have more of that vibe than I do. I like chill games more. I got the third, and I don't get it. Yeah, exactly, Nikki. I don't think you're meant to get it. <laughs> you know, I don't think you're meant to get it. Okay, I'm going to just real quick tab out of Viva Pinata. I'm going to switch to... Away. All right. Switch into desktop for a second while I do this. Okay, let's put in... Breeze command. The team lab. All right, let me copy and paste this. Snacks and finger snap. Do you want it? You want it exclamation Brie, right, Brie? Yes, it's an epidemic zombie game. Okay. Give me a second. All right, let's make sure. There we go. All right. Oh, Jane, you beat me. Wow, so fast. <laughs> Bree, I've been waiting for it for you. I'm so excited for you. Now you're part of our part of our secret commands too. You know, I really thought when I set up like the custom commands and stuff, people would use it to like advertise and, and things like that, advertise various things, which um, which is fine to do if people do want to do it. But y'all just got silly instead. And I love that. <laughs> y'all just decided like um, that you just wanted your own little sayings like you were, I don't know, like you were Animal Crossing characters that had little sayings at the end of everything you said. It's wonderful. I'm like so here for it. <clears throat> Snacks and finger snaps. I had uh, I had some blueberries earlier for a snack. They were really really good. Delicious. Yes, we are the village. Exactly, Jane. You guys are the Animal Crossing village. <laughs> it's great. I restarted my Animal Crossing Island recently, by the way. So if anybody's playing Animal Crossing, it's not playing with me. Um, hit me up to fix that. I have an Animal Crossing, secret Animal Crossing server that's invite only, but if you're cool, you can come and join. 
uh, anybody that's cool basically can come join and uh, and we help each other out playing Animal Crossing You're eating your favorite snack what is your favorite snack Brie I don't think I know unless it's Reese's I, I'm, I'm guessing it's Reese's but I don't because that's what we want to talk about all the time but I don't I don't actually know that I'm just guessing I don't think I've heard you say before Okay, it is Reese's. Okay. I did know. I did know. Jane spilled. <laughs> yeah, I just restarted my island. I had to do some sneaky sneaky time travel to get um, terraforming unlocked. But now that that's unlocked, I'm being a little bit more chill with it and just playing day by day. And slowly building my island back up. Um, it feels so much better to start from scratch than to try to fix everything to a new design. And like now I know a lot more about what I want. I've got my airport and my um, uh, town square area almost aligned. It's one block off, but I'm going to make it look aligned with the way that I terraform around it. Oh, yeah, you did the same thing, Jane. Yeah, I think a lot of people did um, eventually restart after they kind of got a little bit better idea of what they wanted. And then I put both river exits down in the south area. That's what I wanted, too. I didn't want any more on the east and west sides. So now I have like an uninterrupted strip of beach on the, the east and west sides. And it's just interrupted on the uh, the bottom part. This game makes me want to play Sims weirdly. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it is a simulation game. So yeah. Um, and we will be playing Sims next week. Sims 2. Sims 2. We'll have a, we're going to have an episode. It's not really, it's not really a topic next episode. We're just going to get Sims 2 started. We're going to talk about like, you know, we've been doing Interstage Window for a year at this point, so we're going to talk about, like, what's going to be changing for the show for, I guess, what you would consider, like, our season two. Because um, we almost hit, we're, like, almost at a year. It'll be a year next month. So it's close enough, right? And uh, and what changes are going to happen, you know, based on that. And to me, it just feels like a time of change, right? Like, it feels like a time of change for me that I would need to be refocusing on different things. And I really, really love streaming. Um it's become like a really awesome creative outlet for me. So, so yeah, we're going to talk a lot about that stuff next week. Next week, when we introduce the Sims 2 Legacy Challenge. And of course, we'll explain the challenge as well and how that's going to work. All right, let's do another question. Let's do another question. This comes from Salt Bay 360. <laughs> nice name. Okay. Why would a person leaving a server they haven't applied to feel a need to send a paragraph's worth of complaints to the staff just to block them after. What point does this serve beyond venting and potentially ruining someone else's day? Oh boy, I am so sorry, Salt Bay. Ah, uh, I am so sorry this happened to you. Yeah, there is no point. They just want to, they just wanted to vent. Um, they're just frustrated and, and want to, want somebody to know. You know, people, people want to be heard. People want to be seen, right? People want to be seen. They want to be understood. Um, so that's that's the reason. There is there is no other reason. It doesn't actually accomplish anything or serve anything to do this. Um, yeah, they just wanted to be seen. They wanted to be felt. They wanted to be heard. So they did that. I'm so sorry that happened to you. <clears throat> um, I don't know necessarily that I've had like a paragraph's worth of complaints. But I've definitely had people either right after leaving the server or when they're in the process of leaving a serv the server uh, stir shit up in one way or another. I've, I can think of situations where that's happened, absolutely. Um, there's, there's no, like, actual reason for it that makes logical sense. But people in, like to have some control over their lives. They like to, they like to feel like... They can control something. And, and if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense because most things in this world are out of your control, right? Like, I need money to survive. Um, so I have a job that I work 40 hours a week to make that money. But it is not actually up to me for the most part whether I keep that job. Now, it's up to me somewhat, right? Like, I can quit if I want to. Um, I can totally screw up the job and just not do it and eventually, like, get myself fired, right? But... At the end of the day, whether I stay employed or not is largely not my decision. It's mostly the decision of my employer, right? So I have very little control over whether I continue to get money to survive in this world. And that's just like my own personal, you know, 
normal person situation, right? I don't know what this person has going on with their life. Maybe there's a lot of other things that they can't control. Maybe they live at home. They're still young. They live at home with their parents as so they don't control a lot of things about their, their day-to-day life, right? Because they don't, they don't support themselves. Um, you know, maybe they, they have some trauma that they're still processing. Maybe they are in a really negative situation with friends and family. Um, you know, I don't know. Obviously, I don't know this person's story. But doing these behaviors, regardless of whatever their situation is, does not help. It is useless. It is just venting and potentially ruining someone else's day. But it can give you this, this sense of, this false sense of having control over something in your life, right? And the positive here is they blocked you. So now you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it or, or deal with it or anything. They blocked you so you can just move on throughout your day. Uh, so that's the one benefit there in this story. Uh, Nikki says, whoa, yeah, that sounds petty and useless. That said, they basically just told the staff why it's not a loss, so wouldn't let it bug me. Yeah, try to not let it bug you. Um, they blocked you, so you don't, you don't have to deal with it. You can move on. This is a stranger on the internet for all intents and purposes. You never have to interact with them again. So that's kind of the bonus there. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Um, it's never nice to get that type of DM, even if you know that it's fine and you can just move on. It still sucks that you had to read it. All right, so we got our dragonfly. And we're gonna do the same thing, bust him open, and then feed him to the dragonosh so that'll cocoon up. All right, is this? No, that's a joy candy. The dragonfly candy. Oh, there it is. That pup. Oh my gosh, there's so many other candies on top of it. There we go. All right, dragonosh, eat it. And then he'll become a big dragonosh. Right, he ate everything. He should. He's not doing it. He's supposed to cocoon up. Okay, so we ate milk, snapdragon flower, a dragonfly, a red hot, and a salamango. Right? Unless this is broken in my game too. <gasps> that would suck. I'm just reading the wiki page and see what I missed here. Yeah, I don't see anything. They don't work for some reason. I wonder if this is also bugged out in my game. I don't know. Direct it. Try again to direct it to Alamango. Oh, so now it's working that he actually will attack it. Okay, well, we might have to go get another um, Dragonosh. Let's see how much the fast one is. Because <clears throat> it took about an hour for her to go get one with the standard. So we'll have to do Express. That means I need... 56. Okay. I'm gonna have to make a lot of... Make a lot of, uh... Bumpers. Let's do that. You don't get an award for making it big, by the way, so I'm not gonna level up anymore at this point, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure you don't get an award for it anyway. But, uh, but I want to still try to show it off. If I can. It really just gets a bunch bigger. <laughs> That's the main thing that happens. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do... Hi, Munchkin Error! Welcome to the stream! Um, I think this is the first time that I have seen you here. Happy to have you! We're doing our, our last Viva Pinata episode in a roleplay q and I'm gonna answer some more questions in just a moment. If you have questions, feel free to submit them using the channel point redeem below! 
thank you so much for following, Munchkin. Appreciate that. One of the um, outside stray cats we call Munchkin, so I'm laughing just a little bit. <laughs> I'm laughing just a little bit that we have uh, somebody named Munchkin in the chat, <laughs> since we call that cat Munchkin. I guess I can also tell you all how the kittens are doing. Um, they're doing really well. They all can walk now. And I actually fed them some wet food this morning. And uh, oh my god, they devoured it. And I did that because I had seen them starting to drink the water. And they were kind of trying to eat the dry food, but they can't seem to really grasp it or understand it. So I was like, well, we have a little bit of wet food here. Um, and we usually just use the wet food as like special occasion treats for, for Queen and Ash. But I was like, I'll just feed it to the kittens and see. And oh my gosh, they destroyed it. So I might have to get them some more wet food because they they clearly are, are really hungry and want some more than milk. Or I might just like put some water on the dry food and warm it up so that it's kind of behaves like wet food and then they should be able to eat it, I think. Oh, it did work. <gasps> I missed the cocoon. It's a big one now. Yay, look at him. They're going to be so spoiled. Well, yeah. I want them to make good pets, and you want spoiled kitties. <laughs> you can soak the dry food. Yeah, I do that with my elderly dog. Yeah, we've done that for, for Ri, because she's older now. We've done that. Okay, so we go. Giant Dragonosh. That's everything. We've done everything. All right. We've done everything in the Viva Pinata. <laughs> He's so big. So big. So yeah, I think I'm going to, if we don't buy more wet food, I'm going to soak the dry food and do it like that. All right, <clears throat> I'm starting to run low on questions here, guys. If y'all have some, use the channel redeem so that we can do some that way. But I'm gonna go ahead and read the next one here. Where's the Nikki Hot Boy Pinata? It's in the it's in the garden that has all the butterflies in it. That's in a different garden. Um, we after this question, Nikki, we can switch over to that one if you'd like to visit um, Nikki Hot Boy or Hot Boy Nikki. I think is is his name. He's a blue butterfly. So we can go visit him if you like. Um, okay. I'm just checking to make sure what which garden he's in. Yes, I have notes. Okay. <laughs> this probably should, will, does, will not surprise you guys. Let's see. Come on, load up. Okay, he's in the jungle one. So we'll go to the we'll go to the jungle one after this. All right. So next question that we have, this comes from not a therapist. This is another dear Abby type of question. So these are these are fun. They uh, dear Karen. They actually wrote dear Karen. That's funny. Um, what do you do about players in your server who are fairly good players on your server, but also bring with them a large amount of personal baggage, which they are constantly unloading on the OOC channels? Examples: depression, anxiety. Excuse me inappropriate thoughts, etc. You ever just have to show people the door because of bad energy they're bringing despite their contributions to the IC part of the game? So the short answer to that is yes, I do sometimes have to do that. Um, we have definitely had situations where players were fine in character and absolutely not fine out of character. And, uh, and typically, okay, so here's the thing. Everyone's human, okay? And everyone deserves to be treated that way. So I don't ever like want to ban someone for poor social skills unless they actually do something egregious like for example if somebody does something straight up racist yes they're probably going to get kicked out you know if somebody does something like um that i consider an abusive behavior that there's no excuse for then they're probably going to get kicked out right but just general awkward annoying um -ness, which is kind of the examples that you're using here you know unloading their depression anxiety or inappropriate thoughts those are those are those are not like to me um kickable offenses they're just like you know social faux pas it's like you are committing an awkward sir please stop <laughs> so for those situations we typically just dm the person and talk to them and say hey we see this going on what's this about you know and try to to understand from their perspective why they're doing this behavior because that can really help with like talking to them about why that behavior needs to stop, right? 
Now, one other thing I do is in my role plays, because I keep mine very small, right? I never have more than about 30 people in there ever. And it's really more like 15 to 20 normally. So one of the things that I have is what's called a salt chat. Um, I'll never put this in the cafe because there's too many people in there. But in a role play group where everyone is friends and has an, an, a vested interest in getting along, this works relatively well. Um, I have a salt chat. That's where you can put those sorts of things. So if, if you don't feel like you can read that sort of stuff at the moment, you don't have to read the salt chat, right? But that's where like the I'm feeling depressed right now or this awful thing happened to me. Um, that's where it goes, right? So if it's staying in the salt chat and it's not happening like constantly, then I don't think it's a big deal because in at least the way that I run my role plays, we're all friends, okay? We're all friends. So, you know, your friends is, are who you want to go to whenever you're having a bad day. So, you know, I think that helps a lot. Now, this is, I only recommend this if you have very small role plays and only, honestly, if your role plays are 18 plus. Um, teenagers have very poor emotional regulation. They don't, I've never found a situation where you can allow teenagers and also have a salt chat. Um, they just go in there every day and complain about everything, which I get, you know, I complained about everything when I was a teenager too. High school sucked. It, you know, it is what it is, right? But because I'm running games with a small group of adults, a salt chat works great so that people don't feel like, oh, I'm not allowed to talk about anything negative, but also it goes in a proper place where only the people that that opt into seeing it will see it um and if it's if they're doing it like constantly and regularly to where like i'm worried about them and it's getting to be too much then a dm usually solves it and be like what's going on here like this is every day this has been every day for a month what like ha help us understand you know because this is pretty extreme and just talking to them about it and trying to find out from their perspective and offering help where you can and a lot of times just like knowing that somebody noticed is enough in those situations. Now we have absolutely had situations where people didn't get it and they continued to do the bad things out of character. And, you know, sometimes we'll issue warnings or strikes. Sometimes we'll just manage them out. You know, we'll just talk to them and it will become clear between them and us that they are not a fit for the role play or the group and, uh, and they'll just leave, you know. And not to mean in a negative way, but the phrase, the trash takes itself out, right? That's what would happen. Um, Nikki says, I wouldn't necessarily show them the door, but I would message them privately to explain that some of the talking about their life is good, but dragging on and on can come across as manipulative and generally might risk triggering someone else. We just suggest that they keep that in the DMs with their close friends. Yeah, absolutely, Nikki. Um, I usually don't open with that. I usually ask people why and try to get their perspective first. And then I explain how it looks from an outside perspective, including some of the things that you talked about are super valid with that. So, uh, so yeah, that's, so yes, I've had that situation. And that the times that we've removed somebody or that um, we've convinced them to leave has been like after multiple of those conversations, typically, right? Because nobody does stuff just to be a jerk. Like people aren't trying to be mean. I know it doesn't seem like that on the internet sometimes, but most people really are not trying to upset you or, or, or be rude or whatever, you know? Um, people sometimes vent in our general chat, but it's very minimal. The deeper stuff is private and most of us get that. Those who don't learn quick. Yeah, I mean... I mean, in a role play group, unless you're running one of those role plays that's like 100 plus people, then I don't think a little bit of venting is a problem. You know, you're friends with those people. You're writing with them. You know, you're going to you're going to form bonds with them. When you role play with somebody, it's like a friendship fast track. Right. So, yeah, you're going to want to share with them tough parts of your life. And I get that. And I think that's normal and, and totally fine. Jane says salt chat forever muted so I can opt in. Yeah, exactly. That's why we have it in the separate salt chat so that people can do that. Oh, thank you, Nikki. Munchkin wanted to know your favorite color. It's pink. Well, I'm very, and I'm very pink today. <laughs> I've got like my pink for my long sleeve shirt. I've got the pink, pink ears. Um, I made sure that this, I put this on my, these on my wish list and Lar got them for me, these guys. And there's like two different pinks and a purple that's kind of pink looking. But yeah, pink for sure. I love it. Mm-hmm. The other color I like is holographic, which is all the colors. I'm cheating a little bit, but I got um, I got some new nail polish, and one of them I got was Rainbow Snow, uh, from Hollow Taco, and it's like a true like hollow polish. Like this is only two coats, and it's like 
so opaque. And look, because I've got the daylight bulb there. Where my face is focused. There we go. You can see, like, it sparkles so good. And then I put some different iridescent unicorn skins over it, so it's like a rainbow of rainbows. I just love that. I love that so much. <laughs> All right, you wanted to see Nikki Hot Boy one last time. Let's go. Let's go see Nikki Hot Boy. Um, let's see. We're gonna yes, save and quit. And Nikki Hot Boy's in the jungle. So we'll switch over to that particular garden. What's y'all's favorite color? Jane, I know yours is gray, unless that's changed. <laughs> but I think that's the only one in the chat that I know. Your favorite color. Uh, oh, right here. Red. Ooh. Oh, I like that, Brie. What kind of red? Like a like a bright, like fire engine red? Are you talking more like a lipstick red? Um. What kind of red are we talking? Where is Nikki Hot Boy? There he is. Nikki the Hot Boy. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, Nikki. Hey, Nikki, you're so fine. You're so fine. You blow my mind. Hey, Nikki. Hey, Nikki. Okay, we can hang out in this garden for a little while. With the monkeys and the butterflies and stuff. Oh, Nikki has a question. Um, I work with a local library branch to show low-income kids a healthy method of escapism that also allows for growth in reading comprehension skills. As a teacher yourself, do you think there could be a benefit to kids being taught RP? And if so, how would you apply that to the curriculum? Okay, so I am an educator for adults. I have never taught children before, so I don't know necessarily. Um, I'm not like the expert on that, I'll put it that way. I'm a teacher for adults. so. With a big caveat, I'll go ahead and answer this question. <laughs> With that big caveat, basically be saying I'm not the expert in this situation. I do know education, but not children's education. Um, so yes, absolutely. I do think that kids being taught to role play um, would, uh, would be beneficial because, you know, kids play pretend when they're, when they're younger, right? That's a totally normal game. And that's really the same thing. I mean, they're just, they're just LARPing, right? They're just LARPing. So I think giving them outlets to continue that in, into their teenage years and into their adult life, I think can be super, super beneficial. Um, so that could take the form of a text-based role play like a lot of us do. That could take the form of tabletop games. It could take the form of LARPing, you know, whatever makes sense for that kid, whatever they're drawn to, you know. Um, there, was a, there was a recent situation with Dungeon AI, which is actually where Nikki the Hot Boy was inspired from, for y'all that remember that stream. Uh, where uh, where they recently clamped down on some material that was um, that was considered problematic and not safe for work and things like that, and uh, and I posted this in the in the cafe. I think it's in the pineapple pizza chat because it's pretty sensitive. So, but I'm going to talk about it here just briefly, just not going to super into a lot of details. But this person talked about how they had um, some abuse and trauma in their past. Um, you know, pretty pretty deep stuff when they were a kid. And, uh, and games like Dungeon AI and being able to role play similar situations out, um, you know, in a, in a controlled environment where they actually controlled the narrative and there was no real danger was incredibly therapeutic and beneficial to them. And that's a very extreme example, right? But I think even like any kind of problem or trauma or negative thing that happens to you, having a role play type of outlet for that is something that we should continue. Like we do it as kids, we play pretend as kids. And then at some point, you know, we just kind of, we kind of get encouraged to stop. And I don't agree with that. I think we should continue to do that. I know it was incredibly beneficial to me. I really do credit the fact that I come off so well adjusted and, um, and well organized in my mind is due to role play because I was basically always role playing. The only time I ever didn't do any sort of role play was when I was, um, when I had just graduated college and I was starting my career. There was a couple of years that I took off of role play because everything was so crazy back then. Um, it was, this was 2008 housing crisis. Things are ridiculous. Um, 
So that, uh, other than the couple of years there, I have always done some form of role play, whether it's text based, whether it is, um, you know, uh, tabletop D and D mostly. Um, or there was a year that I even did some LARP. It wasn't for me, but you know, <laughs> I did it. So, um, so yeah, I think it would be super, super beneficial. And as far as how to apply it to a curriculum, um, I don't, so I, I've never done anything like this, but Jane, if you're in the chat, um, if you could share kind of what you do, Jane actually has some experience with this type of thing. So, um, so Jane, if you're here and you'd like to add to that, that would be, that would be wonderful. But I think it totally fits into a creative writing curriculum, um, or, or, or theater curriculum or anything of that nature, you know, anything where you can work in creative writing or, or theater type stuff, then I think it's appropriate, you know? Uh, Bree says, I had a teacher back in elementary school who encouraged RP, and it made it super nice to know that it was an adult who thought it was cool and acceptable in a time where I was labeled as a nerd and uncool in a hobby that allowed me to escape the issues I was dealing with and flex my creative muscles. <gasps> oh, Bree, that's so nice to hear. I'm so glad for that for you. I can't remember if I had an adult encourage me, although I can't, I can't remember ever having an adult discourage me either. I never had that, but I definitely had peers that found out and were that were upset by it. But I also had a couple of friends that uh, that were not, you know, not upset by it. Uh, I had some friends that were super into writing fan fiction back when uh, Gundam Wing was a thing, when that was on Adult Swim. We were all into Gundam Wing, and they wrote a bunch of Gundam Wing fan fiction and um, fan fiction of on various Clamp properties. Um, you know, back when I was in high school, and uh, that was things so like Tokyo Babylon X nineteen ninety nine and Chobits and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I had a bunch of nerdy friends, which made it kind of okay, you know, because I had people that weren't weren't so crazy uh, that they would say things like that. But stuff, people that I wasn't super friends with, then yeah, they would for sure. You know, they would for sure. And uh, and we played D&D &D together, like me and all my girlfriends. That's That was my first D&D &D group, was me and a bunch of my nerdy girlfriends. So yeah, I think it would be super, super beneficial um to encourage kids to continue to play pretend essentially in whatever capacity they they can find that fits for them in high school everyone knew i was constantly online having a quote-unquote cyber sex as self inserts but if i talked about rp i was a loser make it make sense yeah yeah exactly good point brie Good. I'm sorry, not Bree. Uh, Nikki. Good point, Nikki. <laughs> yeah, when I was in school, um, not everyone had the internet, so it wasn't quite like that. But everyone that did have the internet was definitely doing that. Um, let me tell you. <laughs> Either they were doing that or they didn't have the internet at their house. That's how that was. <laughs> I went to a really sc small school back then, like 100 kids from ages kindergarten to eighth. Whoa, only 100 kids? In I was definitely bullied by some people for role playing when it finally came out. I was lucky to have good friends who were okay with it. Oh, that's good, Bree. Oh, App, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in, Raiders. How are you guys doing? Um, we're actually playing our last episode of Eva Pinata. So, um, but but Nikki wanted to see the Nikki Hot Boy Pinata, so we came back to the jungle, and that's what we're looking at now. We're not really doing anything. We're just kind of talking. <laughs> we're doing our role play Q and A. So we're just uh, we're just chatting. Mochi! Oh, Mochi, I didn't realize you were here today. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> so yeah, um, yeah, Nikki, I think that's a, that's a really good thing, and we should, and we should definitely be encouraging kids to continue to play pretend in whatever capacity they, uh, they're comfortable with, you know, because I think there's, there's just so many benefits. There's so many benefits. Working something out in a fictional setting, um, so that you can better deal with it in real life, I think is, you know, there's something to be said for that, and I and I I don't like that at some point we discourage kids to stop playing pretend. Girls especially, I feel like really get encouraged to stop playing pretend and get encouraged to like go go have kids and raise a household or something. <laughs> Whereas boys, uh, a little bit do get to continue to play pretend. You know, there it's okay to continue to play video games and things like that as a as a guy, but not as a girl so much. What was your own personal biggest oof moment early on? Oh, I'm trying to remember. On Live Journal, I ghosted a lot of people that I really should not have ghosted. Oh, uh, thank you for the lurk, app. Thank you so much. I know I always have to raid and, and bail because I just finished streaming and it's like, I'm tired. I need to step away from the computer for a second. 
Uh, personal oof moment in RP. Yeah, I used to I used to ghost a lot, and I was really bad about it too. Like it was very obvious it was me. So this is what I would do on Live Journal, and I got in trouble a lot for this with people. People were very mad at me. <laughs> Um, but like I would just delete all my live journals, right? And then I'd make brand new ones um, with different characters. And uh, <laughs> so I'd make the brand new ones with different characters. But then I would go join all like the same exact groups, you know? Um, and they weren't group RPs back then. They were like they were like dressing rooms and like things were just things were a little bit different on live journal. So it, it wasn't structured as group RP like you think of a group RP now. There was so, some stuff like that. But anyways, it was a lot more casual. So I would join all these same groups and people would realize it was me. And then it would be like, oh, I just ghosted. <laughs> so it was like, uh... <laughs> and I would do this like all the time, y'all. I was ridiculous about it. Like, I don't know what it was. I think I was just, you know, kind of indecisive on what kind of character I wanted to play. And I didn't know how to tell people that I was tired of my character. And so like... To me, it was just like, oh, I need to leave this whole situation instead of just telling them I'm bored of my character. I'm making a new character, which would be make way more sense and be way kinder. But I didn't. I was dumb. I was like high school age. The time I'm talking about, like I was high school age, you know. Oh, oh, another one. Good. Um, what has been one of your favorite plots that you've wrote within your own character storyline? Not a big event, but something personal to one of your muses that sticks out from over the years. So back on Tumblr Indie Days, Naomi ran this group verse called Wicked Girls, which was a huge inspiration for Magic Reborn, actually. Part of the inspiration from that was from Wicked Girls. And it was a soulmates AU, where it was like a witch and her familiar, right? And they had to find each other. And we had this whole thing, like we had this whole plot. It was basically like during the Salem witch trials and, you know, it's the Salem witch trials, but witches were real, right? In this, in this world. And uh, so there was, this was young, this was young Haley, and it was Haylijah. Oh my god, yeah, you were in Wicked Girls. Um, so it was young Haley and older Elijah, and uh, and she was the witch, and he was the familiar, and she was like trying to avoid being, she was trying to avoid being found as the witch, while simultaneously developing her magic, which she had to practice, otherwise it would get out of control and she would get found. And there was, there was like all this, there was all this like crazy plots, right? And like her friends were getting tried because whenever someone would leave the verse, we'd have them found as a witch and then they would get hanged. <laughs> so she was like constantly seeing all of her friends like be put to death and stuff and dealing with that while also trying to start a marriage with Elijah and have kids because she was like hell bent on having kids in that verse. She wanted to have a whole big old mess of kids, right? In this situation where she's trying not to get killed. <laughs> and eventually they end up... Um, in a situation where she's pregnant, she's had the baby, the first baby, and they realize that like they cannot stay here and they end up like escaping. And it was one of the few RPs that we played out the entire arc of it, right? The entire arc of it and finished it. And it was just, it's just so memorable. Like I still think about scenes from that role play, like scenes when they first met and he was like a cat, right? Because he's a familiar. So he's like a cat, but he had a human form too. But when she met him, he was like a big old jaguar scared the hell out of her. And she ran away. Like I think about that. And I think about like the time that they got um, attacked by a neighboring village and, uh, and she had to like fight with her magic and actually like save people. And it was just, it was so good. That role play was so good. And I still think about Wicked Girls to that day. <sighs> soulmates AUs are so good yes they are I remember reading this on the dash I'm so glad you picked this one it was such a great read oh thank you Brie it was really really fun to write okay Jane I see your question what character from all of your time RPing is the best villain by any definition uh definitely when Landon played or Bastion Lestrange in Love Our Only Hope still my favorite villain plot even though it was like one of the ones where I first met like the current crew that I role play with it was like seven eight years ago now um, he was the best. He had, it, he, it was Harry Potter role play, right? So they had magic, but he didn't really like that. He liked to use his knives and get his hands dirty. And, uh, and so he had like the most amazing, like when they would catch, cause he was a death eater, right? And they would catch an or one of the order members or whatever and have conflicts with them. So whenever he would have fights or when he would have sessions where he caught somebody and he was trying to like get information about the order out of them, um, and those torture scenes, they were so good. So, so good. He was a um, Joseph Morgan face claim. So 
looks like Klaus, and uh, and he was excellent. Still my favorite villain. Still my favorite villain to this day, hands down. <laughs> yes, exclamation Landon, right? <laughs> yeah, still to this day, um, a favorite of mine. That particular, the original rendition of Rebastian. Um, because, of course, she's played him multiple times, right? But that original version, best villain. So, so good. I'm going to read one of the one of the questions that we have from the form next. We've got two more questions on the form, so y'all keep those coming in on the um, on the channel point redeem because there's only two more left on the form. Uh, so this next question, this is another one from Jasmine, the leader Ortega. Which of your RP characters' lives would you generally like to live the most? So I tend to make my characters in dire situations. <laughs> So, I don't know. I say none. Like, they all have a lot of problems. And um, and my life is boring, and I like it that way. <laughs> Sorry, hang on. My nose is a little itchy. Um, So, I can't think of any. Like, who has a good life? I don't know. Maybe Sam in Freya was okay. Although he had this weird thing with his brother. So, I don't know if I'd want to go through that. That seems pretty awful. Although he had a very nice job. A very cushy lifestyle, so I think that's pretty good. Um, this is me, if you couldn't tell. Oh, Bree, thank you so much. I didn't realize you were you were Jasmine, the leader Ortega, but thank you so much for all the questions. I really appreciate it. So I don't know. I like my instinct says like, oh, the one with the cushy job and and chill lifestyle. But then like he had trauma and stuff as well. You know, past trauma with his with his dad on the pirate ship and. And he had like current issues with his brother that were pretty stressful for him. So I don't know, but I guess that would be, I guess that would be the the one, you know, because at least he had, at least he had a cushy job and chill lifestyle, and he didn't have to actually like worry about his life being in danger or anything like that. Like that's not that wasn't a concern for him. He was never gonna die or like get sick, um, or you know, or anything like that. Because they because on Freya they had like medical attention. Oh, that you didn't have to worry about that. So, and if anything ever happened to him, a doctor would fix him as much as they could anyway. So, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question for chat too. Uh, chat, uh, which is one of your RP characters' lives that you would genuinely like to live the most? Tell me which one. Type some type some answers in that while I take just a, a quick little potty break. I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, uh, no answers? Does everybody feel like I do? Uh, that their RP characters' lives are just, like, uh, dramatic and tragic? <laughs> and maybe... <laughs> and maybe living them would not be good? <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs> That's how I feel. Um, yeah, I mean, I tend to... I, I put the conflict in the roleplay character, right? So, uh, so, yeah, why would I want to live that in real life? <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's some good answers. Mochi says, I made an OC who owned a cute flower shop during a magic slash slice of lifestyle RP, so that's what I'd want to be. Oh, yeah. I guess that's the other thing is I don't really play a lot of slice of life RPs. So most of my characters have awful things in their in their life and in their world that happen. But I guess if you're playing slice of life, the conflict can be much more um, minimal and normal and average. So then you don't have to think about it in that way. Nikki says, I had a character named Aya Vasquez, no, Aya Vasquez, not, no S, um, who was a naiad that lived with her parents. Her spring was underground behind her house. My boyfriend played the god 
Arch Archelos? I'm not sure how to say that. I hope I said that right. Was our patron deity in that story? It was a very plain story, but really wholesome and an adorable love story. Oh, I love that. A nice little love story. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that would be a good life to live if it was just like a cute little love story. I want to be Cherry without the existential crisis and from her latest rendition. <laughs> yes, Cherry without the trauma. Uh, we love her. She's a wonderful brat. Um, <laughs> she's really got it made. She's really got it made in a lot of ways. Um, really good life there for Cherry. Just, uh, just like constantly under existential crisis, however. <laughs> Poor thing. I loved her. I loved her and Richard because um, she had the honey motif and he was the bear. I loved that. I love Rory's life. She has quite a bit of a different background in Freya, but in her original verse, she's a sister of a kingpin and she's such a badass. She's had a lot of trauma, but I like the concept of having a very different life from my own. She kicks ass. She's empowered. She grows from what brought her down. It's a lot, but I don't know. Something seems right about it. Well, you know, I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to aim for a boring life like I do, Brie. That's totally valid. That's just my personal preference to have a very boring life. You know what I mean? <sighs> All right. This is the last question on the form. Um, so if you'll have any more that you want to talk about, put them in the channel redeems. I got to go through those and make sure I didn't miss one too. I'm going to do that in a second. Um, discouraged in Nebraska. This is from Discouraged in Nebraska. I was part of a group of about four people coming up on five years now. Wow, long time. Congratulations. And I love this group, but they recently have as a whole decided to keep bringing up a, a particular topic that makes me uncomfortable. It's about my character, so it's not like I could really avoid it. Oh, okay. Um, I knew that if I asked them to stop, they would refuse due to previous similar situations. So I decided to leave. Two have now private messaged me asking why I left. And I don't know how to tell them the truth without them getting either offended that I'm a Puritan judging them or like I'm calling them horrible people or that I should have said something. They were my friends before this point, but I don't really want to be friends with them anymore because I just know they're going to get mad if I tell them. Did I lie and say I got too busy? Okay, no, absolutely don't lie. So there's a couple of things going on here while I'm saying do not lie. You say... I don't really want to be friends with them anymore because I just know they're going to get mad if I tell them. The first, I don't know these people. You do. But you don't know that. You don't know they're going to get mad if you tell them until you tell them and they prove it to you. Okay? That's one thing. You say you don't really, really be friends with them, but what if they don't get mad at you? Would you still want to be friends with them? I think that's a question you have to ask yourself in this situation. You don't want to be friends with them if you really don't want to be friends with them you don't have to respond you can just move on with your life and associate with other people okay um i don't really recommend this because i think that when you do those types of behaviors it's you're hurting yourself and your ability to communicate things in the future so i would recommend responding if for no other reason then i think you hurt your communication skills when you don't respond to situations like this um, these aren't strangers, you know, these are friends. You were friends with them for five years, okay? So I think you do care about what they think about you. I definitely get the vibe from what you've said that you care what they think about you. Um, but you've got a couple of these comments. So you say, I'm a, this is the, the things that they're going to think. They're going to think you're a Puritan judging them. They're going to think that you're, that you believe they're horrible people, or they're going to think that you should have said something sooner. Okay. You don't, you're not in their head. You don't know what they think. When I see people write these sentences like this, I tend to think like, this is what you believe, okay? Do you believe a little part of yourself that they're horrible people for whatever this character situation is? Do you? Like, be honest. Um, are you being a little bit Puritan? I don't know. Like, I can't tell from the context of this question. But you put these thoughts on them that they've not expressed to you. So, where did these thoughts come from? They can only come from your own mind, then. So I wonder, when I read this, I wonder, are these thoughts coming from you? Like, are you thinking these things about yourself? I think you need to take some time to really think about how you feel about the situation. I don't know what the situation is, so I can't really provide advice on how you might change your thought pattern about it, because this question doesn't include those details. It just includes that something happened, right? You gotta sort yourself out. It might take time, right? Like that, that could take a lot of time. 
once you have sorted yourself out, I do think that you, the people that you've been five friends with for five years, you should probably respond to them and tell them what happened. And if it's like months from now that you actually sort your mind out on what it was, then, you know, you're going to have to tell them, I'm so sorry. It took me a while to get back to you. I didn't know how I felt about this situation. I really had to think about it. And now here it is. Here is what happened and how I feel. Right. I, I really think if you're friends with them for that long, that lying is an awful idea. That's an awful idea because now you have not given them the opportunity to understand where you're coming from. You've not given them the opportunity to like, what if they feel like they did something wrong in this situation and, and they don't know it upset you? What if they would want to apologize and you, you lie to them? They ha never have the opportunity because they're like, oh, well, Nebraska said that they just got busy. It's all cool. But if they knew it upset you, they might feel differently. I don't know, right? Because this question doesn't describe whatever the actual incident is. Um, it sounds like there's still some residual anger about them. Nikki says that. I agree, Nikki. I think there's a lot of feelings going on in this question here. Um, what I read here is a lot of how Nebraska feels about themselves. And for some reason, they are projecting that onto these their friends because their friends make comments on their character that reminds them how they feel about themselves. That's what I that's what I see here. Um, so, you know, Nebraska, if you have another friend that like kind of knows a little bit more details about this situation that you could talk through, who might be able to give you some perspective on on it, that's not going to go gossip back to the, the five year friends. Right. That might be a, the best way to kind of help you sort your mind out, because I, I think that's that don't lie to them. You either need to wait to respond or you need to tell the truth. But before you do any of that, I think you need to figure out how you actually feel because there's a lot of turmoil going on here um, that I don't think it would be fair to formulate a response right now reading this. Um, this sounds like a really tough situation. So I wish you the best of luck in figuring this out. Um, I know I wouldn't want to be in your, your position right now where you've got people you've been friends with for five years that you feel like you're not friends anymore. That must really suck and really hurt. Um, so yeah, good luck. I hope you're able to, to figure out something, you know, nobody wants to lose friends. They've been friends with for five years. So that's that. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I'm glad there's some more questions in here because that one was a little bit, that one was a little bit heavy. Okay. Uh, Brie asks, is there a type of character you haven't had the opportunity to write but would want to try exploring in the future? Mm, as of right now, no. I don't think so. I think I'm pretty satisfied with the types of characters that I play at the moment. Um, yeah. I recently tried to start playing a little bit um, of a different type of character with an older guy. Like, you know, the male muses that I play like age them up a little bit more. I tried that, but I was just kind of like, I don't know, it didn't really fit. So maybe try that again at some point. I don't know. But uh, but no, not right now. I'm pretty satisfied, I feel like. Nikki asks, Dear Karen, in a situation where you were dating your writing partner in real life, but you don't want others in the group to necessarily know that, how do you handle jealousness that arises when other players approach you bragging about how they intended to get with your partner, not just their character, but them. Is there a way to navigate that without having to tell people about your personal lives? No, you're going to have to tell them. Oh my God. Okay. There's a lot going on here, Nikki. Holy crap. Um, first of all, why would you want to keep it a secret that you're with this person in real life? I don't understand. Like, why is that a secret? Um, if you can tell me a little bit more about that situation that you're asking about, like why they would want to keep it a secret, I might be able to, uh, explain that a little bit more. Also, like, why are people DMing each other about what they want to do in real life with their roleplay partners? I'm sorry, that is just weird. That is just weird. Even if you get a crush on your roleplay partner, like, why would you go tell other people that you have, like, intentions in regard to this person? That's really weird. I, I don't know. There's a lot going on here, Nikki, uh, that I don't really understand. We're both married and poly with just us and our spouses, but mono people tend to judge that. Oh, fuck mono people. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little personal in that regard. 
oh, fuck them. You know, I'm sorry, but if if role players are going to make fun of you for having um, deviant lifestyles, like... I'm sorry. No, just live your truth. If they're going to be judgy, that's on them. Exactly, Jane. Fucking nerds. It's a can of worms we don't want to deal with. We've had girls that message me like, oh, I love him. Can you back off? Our characters would be perfect and I really like him. I just sit there like big eyes. I would just, if somebody messaged me that, like if I was in that situation and someone messaged me that, I think I would message back, LOL, no, period. <laughs> like what? Who gets to tell me that? Who gets to tell me that? No. That's between me and the other person. You don't go... Okay, so even in like regular role play situations, if two people are role playing together, right? And you're like, oh, I, I don't want that those characters to be a couple because I want my character in there. You don't go to the other one and be like, back off. You go to the original one and be like, I want to ship our characters. Is there a way we can do that? Like, what? Like, this is some catty. This is some catty shit. Like, I don't... No, this is dumb. Nikki, this is dumb. I'm sorry. These, this, pe these people sending you these types of messages, like, just be honest. Like, just be honest with them. Be like, no. <laughs> what? Live your truth, girl. Be more confident. Yeah, it's so dumb. This is so dumb. This feels like an OSC IC line is not there. Yes. Somebody is, like, not keeping their in-character and out-of-character separate. They are letting their emotions bleed into one another. Um, yeah. No. This, just be honest. Like, Nikki, live your truth. Be more, be confident about it. This, this person, this doesn't make any sense. Like, the way that this person's behaving doesn't make any sense. Regardless of mono or poly or any of that. No. Freaking weirdo nerd. <laughs> no way. All right, y'all. <clears throat> I'm just going to scroll really quick. If y'all, we have time for maybe like one more question. I'm going to scroll really quick through the Twitch um, thing to make sure that I didn't miss any earlier questions. It doesn't look like I missed anything in here. Okay. I had this with my ex, different scenario. They just didn't know we were together because they didn't really know us, but honestly, even ignoring them at that point, like some people cross the RP boundary too much. And even then, why are they coming to you? So dumb. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, Brie, this is dumb. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do for the last little bit. We're going to save our game, first of all. And this is it. That's the end of Eva Pinata. We uh we did everything except for Ella Vanilla because it bugged out. We did everything else in that game. That was really nice and satisfying. We're gonna play Sims 2 next. Bye Aviva Pinata. That's right. It feels like they're trying to rattle me instead of actually trying to get him. I'm not his keeper, but I'm also super upset. Yeah, I would be upset about that too, Nick. I would be upset about that too if somebody was coming to me like that. Like it's inappropriate on multiple levels, regardless of like y'all being poly or the role play or anything. Like it's just like that is so super inappropriate to be like, hey, partner, I want your other person. Like, I'm sorry, this is just weird. This is just weird on so many levels. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, I always forget that Landon does this for me. I didn't find a good news article, so I'm just going to go find it real quick. Um, we're going to do something, we're going to do something else before that. I haven't shown a kitten this stream, so before we actually read the good news article, um, I'm actually going to go get a kitten. Uh, but let me find an article first. Okay, I found a good article. I'll be right back though. I'm gonna get a kitten.
Okay, here we go. This one I've been calling baby because it's very little. Um, I, uh, I don't think I've shown baby yet on stream, but I can't remember exactly. And uh, I was going to show what the other black and white one, but it was busy nursing and I didn't want to interrupt that. Yes, we got the kitty. Okay, come here. Why not let go so I can show you to everybody? Here we go. The baby. Oh, hi guys. Hey. Did it dance? This is, that's the kitty you want, Bree? Well, Bree, you know you're welcome to come get him. You know you're welcome to come get him. They are very cute. Little baby. Hello. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's not very vocal. This one's not very vocal, but this one's also one of the littler ones. But they all will run and play now, so. <laughs> well, has a little caught. Let go. There we go. Here we go. Stupid $2,000 COVID hotels are standing in the way of me and my kitten. That's right, Bree. They really are. I didn't realize hotels were that much right now, but I guess that makes sense because... They probably can't do full capacity and things like that. It looks like Charlie Chapman. <laughs> Does it? You look like Charlie Chapman, baby. You look like Charlie Chapman. You do a little bit. You got a little black nose. Okay. You're right. A little black nose. Oh, and look at the black toe beans. Black toe beans. I'm in South Carolina, Nikki, so very close. Okay. No, you're not going to vocalize for everybody? No squeakies? No squeaky meows? Their meows are getting more meow-like. They don't sound quite as squeaky anymore. They don't sound quite as squeaky. Okay, we're going to go put baby away, and then we'll do the good news article. I'll be right back. All right, yeah, Nikki, I'm in um, South Carolina, Charleston area, but you could definitely, um, it's definitely driving distance. Like, I think when you explained to me where you lived before, if I remember correctly, um, we're driving distance from each other. So Brie could still stay at your place, drive here. Y'all can get a kitten. You can get a kitten too, Nikki. Um, get kittens and then go back. <laughs> They're that much here because it's mandatory to stay on for three days for anyone coming into Canada via plane or quarantine. Oh, womp, that sucks. Ah, oh, Brie. We try to make it work out, but I don't know, I guess. But yeah, still the first weekend in June is when the kittens will be ready. So, if anybody wants a kitten, hit me up. Um, I'm allergic and Molly would eat it. I've had some uh, other people say that too, that their dogs would eat the kittens. What kind of dogs do y'all have that eat cats? I don't even understand. <laughs> okay, let's do the good news article. All right, so here we go. He saved a stranger from drowning in India. Now they're married in the Netherlands. This sounds like a role play plot to me. Like, <laughs> okay, so uh, this is a total, this is a total crazy adventure. Okay, so yoga instructor Napir Gupta, I think that's how you say, I know that's Gupta, but I think that's Napir, Napir, anyway, was swimming in the waters off a beach in Goa when the current got the better of her. While a strong swimmer, she feared she'd be unable to make it back to shore. Hope came in the form of Hungarian-born financial advisor Attila Bosniak, who spied his soon-to-be or her, his soon true love to be in trouble and was swimming to aid her. <laughs> this is such this is such like a, a, a meet cute. This is like such a movie meet cute. Here, look at them. Aren't they adorable? And I guess they went back to the Netherlands and got married. That's what it looks like happened in this article. Let's see if there's any more pictures. If I scroll down more, oh, here we go. Oh, here's them signing the wedding vows, or the, the wedding license. Oh, So cute, the poppy. So this is totally a role play plot. Um, so <laughs> that's why I clicked on this article, because I thought it was interesting. Okay, so I'm going to just read a little bit more. 
Um, once he saw a guard making a beeline for Gupta, a bleeding Bosniak who'd suffered numerous scrapes and bruises, swam back to shore and collapsed on the beach chair. A grateful Gupta who quickly bounced back from her own ordeal felt compelled to help the stranger who saved her life. Swiftly procuring first aid supplies and chocolate ice cream as a thank you, she returned to her hero's side after tending his injuries. She tendered, she tended him the ice cream. <laughs> Some might blame it on chocolate, but in that instant, Gupta's emotional landscape underwent a sea change, and she was the only one. Bosniak felt the magic surge of attraction too. Well, of course, I mean, if you almost died and someone came to save you, and then you got scraped up, and then you got chocolate ice cream, I mean, that's like you know, love potion right there. <clears throat> so they were staying in the same yoga resort, and so that's how they actually got to know each other. Thumper! Oh my god, Thumper! <gasps> Thumper, you just missed seeing one of the kittens. I'm so sorry. I'll have to clip it. I haven't made clips from the previous stream, but I'll have to clip that from this stream so you can see it, um, Thumper. I showed, a, showed off another kitten. Yeah, I wanted to do that at the end of the stream today. I'm so sorry. Thumper is another person. Hey, Thumper, see if you, see if you can drive to, to Nikki's house. <laughs> <laughs> See if that's a close enough drive, because you can stop there and then come to me and get a kitten. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know. Why, indeed. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's how we can make it work out. Party at Nikki's. And everybody gets kittens. And then they can go home. <laughs> With a kitten. All right. <clears throat> a working bitch. I understand. I understand. All right. Let's find someone to, someone to raid, y'all. Let's find someone to raid. Okay. Oh, um, Rivals playing Resident Evil Village. So we have to see that since that's the new game that just came out on Friday. I mean, I'm sure hopefully he's at the spot where he's um he's not hopefully he's at the spot where he's doing like lady um Dim dimitesque or however you say her name the big woman y'all know <laughs> hopefully he's there because i don't think he's played very much of this yeah i want to see a giant woman thank you for the applause nikki thank you for the applause um it looks like he might be past that part i'm not sure uh i watched my husband play this game a little bit so i'm like sort of kind of aware of what's going on it's the end of an era. Can't wait to say season two. Thank you, Bree. Um, yes, next week we will be starting on Sims 2. We're going to talk to you guys about some changes for the Twitch, for the YouTube. Like, basically, it's a time of change. So we're going to tell you guys what you can expect and kind of how things are going to go for for the next the next phase of Karen Terry content. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Here we go. Let's raid Rival. Here we go. Rival. Okay, there we go. The raid's going to start in a few seconds. All right, thank you guys so much for watching the last View of Pinata episode. It was super fun to do a Q&A with y'all. Um, I really appreciate all the questions. Some of them were really silly and some of them were really insightful. Okay. All right. Bye. Y'all have fun watching Resident Evil. See you on Thursday or Saturday, whichever one you come to next. Okay. Bye.